We have fire. I think they're... It's burning down pretty good now.
Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. Glad you could join me. I'm Bill. And what you've been watching is uh, me harvesting the components for a primitive buck saw, and which we're going to start uh, assembling here in a little bit. So I was harvesting the, the two end pieces, the uh, center piece, which acts as a, a, a cantilever, uh, some roots. I'm trying to go as primitive as possible with this, so uh, I was, uh, instead of using cordage, uh, I've never seen anybody use natural, uh, natural cordage, and tree roots are very, uh, very uh, readily available uh, in most places. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a try today, and uh, the nice thing about assembling components in the wilderness, uh, it, the less items you have to carry and pack in. Uh, in this case, I only have to bring in a blade and uh, the rest of the components nature provides. Uh, it's just like uh, you could take an axe head in, for instance, if you're going to be hiking in quite a ways uh, to your destination. You're going to be in there a long-term uh, situation. Instead of carrying the whole thing with the handle on it, uh, carry, uh, taking up a lot of room and extra weight, you just carry the head in and you can improvise uh, a, a handle for it from the, uh, the resources that uh, nature provides. So uh, that's just a few, uh, few of the benefits. The old saying is the more you know the less you carry. And I'm a minimalist as much as possible, not 100 percent, but uh, I'm, I'm really leaning more towards the minimalist uh, uh, type of thing as I as I uh, as the years go by. So, and it gives you a lot deeper connection with nature. Also, I found it to have a very uh, a very deep spiritual aspect to it. So, anyways, let's go over and uh, and take a look at this uh, at uh, at what I have, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start putting this together. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Okay, I have this line laid out on the ground here. When you build one of these, you want to have it on uh, flat ground. Uh, it makes the uh, the job a whole lot easier. So everything's primitive except for the the blade, of course. And this is just standard blade that I picked up at the hardware store. Uh, has the uh, the raker teeth on it. And what I do, I put key rings on the ends of these here, and you'll see why. Those are on there in a little bit. There, these could be. You can put a, a nail through there. Uh, wooden sticks. Wooden sticks don't last very long because of the torque on them. They tend to break. Uh, nails. A nail's going to fall out. If it falls out, it hits the ground litter here, and it's gone. You're kind of screwed. The nice thing is with key rings, they're cheap, and you're not going to lose these. And if you have multiple blades. If you wear a blade out or the blade breaks or something happens to it, you just pop the key rings off and uh, and you can use it on uh, on a backup blade. And I just find it works a lot better that way. The, uh, the uh, key rings, uh, I would advise installing them on your blade before you stash it away and, and use it. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're like me, you have a tendency to lose things and things get misplaced. So what usually happens with me, I go to use the blade and, and of course I can't find the key, uh, the key rings. So I just, uh, I just install them on there, eliminates the, uh, the, the uh, factor of them getting lost and uh, they're there when you need them. So. Anyways, I'm going to reset the camera here and uh, go ahead and start machining this guy down. So, stay tuned. Out here. And I'm going to try something a little bit different uh, with this, this uh, cross brace here, the cantilever part. So, what we're going to do is put the cordage out of the way here and the toggle. This is actually a windlass and uh, show you how to use that in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get this set up here and what you want to do is, first of all you want to make sure these are 
more or less even with one another here. In other words, you don't want one way up here and one down, so you want to have them more or less even, so kind of eyeball that. Now I wouldn't put, you don't want to put your cross brace way up here at the top because it's not going to have the leverage to pull these out. You want to have the leverage at the top here so it, as you tighten the cordage, it sucks the top in using this as a, as a, a fulcrum and it's going to bow this out at the bottom. Pressure is going to go out at the bottom. It's going to put tension on this blade here and the key rings are going to keep that from, uh, from uh, slipping out of here. Uh, off the end and we're going to cut a couple little notches in the bottom here so uh, let's go ahead and eyeballing this here and I'm thinking that's a pretty good spot there so I'm going to go ahead and mark these two locations this way and I want to mark them so they're facing one another here so the holes aren't off and let's see what that looks like here I think that's probably pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something a little different with this. Instead of notching these and notching this cross brace, I'm going to I'm going to point these ends kind of blunt a blunt point on each end. I'm going to take my knife blade and I'm going to ream out a, a depression, a hole on each side here that the points will fit into never made one that way so we're going to try something a little different today nothing like trying something experimental on camera with no actual guarantee that it's going to work but let's we'll see if we can make it work I don't want to bring this down to a sharp point to where it's weak. It's going to it's going to carry a certain degree of pressure. I'm making this out of pine, by the way. You can construct one of these from probably pretty much any wood. Softer wood. Be a little easier to carve on. That should probably work all right. That doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera so you guys, I'm not boring the heck out of you guys, and I'll just kind of fade in back and forth as this goes along and uh, and describe what I've done. Stay tuned. All right. I've got the other side to a point, kind of a blunt point. And we've already marked the holes here so they're facing one another. I'm going to stick this right up here. I'm going to use my other knife for this because it has 
a sharp point on it, so I'm looking for a certain degree of depth. But at the same time, I don't want the hole to get too terribly wide. Just wide enough to accommodate those, those points. I don't believe I've ever seen anybody do one like this, so I want to do something different and unique. Maybe it'll work good, maybe it'll bomb, who knows. I think it'll be okay. This is where softer wood really helps out a lot. in the uh, machining part here. I want to get about... I want to get deeper than that. I want those points to... I want a decent notch here so those points will seed in and not, not fall out. Get in there. See what we have here. I think I'm going to take that. I want a little more depth to that. I'll demonstrate one here and then the other one I'll do off camera since. I'm sure all of you have the, the general idea here what's going on. That's what I have so far. And yeah, I'm really thinking that's going to work. That's seated in pretty decent. So this is the top. As you remember, we're going to set, set that down not at halfway, but just below halfway here to provide a little more lever leverage and I'm thinking that'll probably I'm thinking that'll probably work there the main issue that I would see uh, would be this popping loose but with the tension on it it's it's seated in pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. I'm going to do this side, get the hole in, and then we'll cut the two notches at the bottom, the slots for the blade to recess in. And I was thinking of putting little notches up here so the cord just doesn't slip off the top, but I don't think it's going to rock in that far. There's bark on here, which provides friction. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this hole, and okay, welcome uh, we'll back. Be back. I've got the other, got the other hole 
done and uh, the points of these sit in pretty decent so now make sure I'm in frame here take the blade This, these top, the tops, and the top ends will rock inward as we tighten the cordage. I'm going to run these notches right in the middle of bottom of these uh, two end pieces here. So I'm kind of eyeballing this. Trying to get a, uh, a good horizontal line on there, down the center of these. Doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty, pretty close. So with the scoring on here, Sure, I can see that. The scoring on there, uh, I'm going to use my little fine tooth saw here. So this is all I did was cut a slot, and it fits in nice, it actually fits in perfect. Uh, the only thing is I need to make the notch deeper. You can see the teeth are still showing, so I want that to be recessed so it's still got to go down about a quarter a quarter of an inch Actually fits nice and snug. I like that. And those teeth are just recessed. 
down in there so that's actually perfect. The uh, width of this little uh, saw blade here is uh, perfect. Uh, it matches up the width of that uh, that blade. Let's get this one cut now. fit test and it's good. <coughs> so go ahead and uh, stick the blade in here. And this is where you have to have those your slots that you cut. Uh, even with one another. If they're off, it's not going to fit. I like that nice snug fit. It just makes things a lot easier trying to assemble this than having loose parts moving it out to the ends of the key ring now or key rings as I should say and this is why the key rings are on here so when there's pressure and that cordage is tightened down pull against these ends. And keep them from, uh, I wonder if I can put that up there, nope. I guess I'll have to work on it down here. Make sure I'm all in frame here. Yeah. <clears throat> and the knot that I used here to join these two pieces of root together. That's called a sheet bend. It's a really good knot uh, for joining two pieces of cordage together. It's very fast and easy to use. The only real issue that we could have here would be the root cordage failing and breaking. Wrap this around. I'm just trying to think of where I want to join the cordage at and tie it off. I'm thinking up here in the front. This is going to be the handle back here. It's a little thicker. This one has some pine sap on it, so I'm thinking this would be the better handle end. So we'll go ahead and terminate our cordage up on the front. get three or four windings out of this if my calculations are correct. And that's a big if the calculations were correct. I want to leave a little bit of slack in this cordage in the middle so when we stick the windlass in here 
we'll be able to uh, be able to get a few wine, a uh, few uh, turns on that to torque this down. Okay, so I've got too much slack up in the front here, so I'm gonna bring this up to about here. If something goes terribly wrong and the roots fail, I do have some extra roots, so... Oh, that's still not reaching. I was hoping to get another turn out of this. The more turns, the better here. Uh, looks like we may only get four wraps around this. There's not enough cordage left here to go all the way around and reach this tag in. Darn it. I was hoping... Because I'd really like to have more here. I do have some extra roots. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and grab some more roots. I think I'm going to splice one in here so we can get a few more turns on this. Uh, the more the better up here on the front. Try and preserve as much cord here as I can. All right, so we have a splice on here. top. A little more slack here. Carpenter ants down here trying to eat me up. Okay, I think we're ready to uh, to tighten this down. Saw over there before I wind up losing it. So we'll take the windlass, and what we have here is there's three strands on the top and three on the bottom. So I'm feeling a lot more confident having that much. So take the windlass, put it right in the middle. Move it underneath. We're going to start winding. With that much uh, cordage on there, I think we're pretty good as far as breakage go. Make sure I've got enough slack here. It has to reach up against this to keep from uh, unwinding. Ants are trying to kill, uh, trying to eat me alive out here. Make sure these are seated in good in the notches. I think we're looking pretty good here. 
and this won't take long to put the required tension on here. Now I can lift it up. Now that we have tension, this isn't going to pop out. Let's kind of turn it on a little bit here. This is kind of the rough part uh, in the beginning, trying to get all the pieces to uh, get in this tighten without the bar popping loose. So with the tension on here, we've passed that point. Now, if I let go of this, there's torque on this this uh, this windlass, and it'll just take off. So this is why we have enough length to reach down here on this this uh, crossbar here. Pretty decent. This thing turned on me a little bit here. Which I'm not too happy about, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm not sure why that wants to rotate. See, that thing wants to turn and pop out of there. The other side's good. Hmm. I think it's going to require... Get it out of the hole is off a little bit. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is yeah, I'm not too happy about that. I'm going to have to pull this apart and work on this hole a little bit. Uh, Not sure exactly what I'm gonna have to do to it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera. This is the basic idea though. But this thing wants to rotate. You see it's bowing the blade here as it gets pressure on it. And the only thing I can think of is I put the hole. The hole wasn't lined up good with this one. This one's good on this side. Not happy about that. I'm going to pause the camera and see what I can do to fix this. Okay, welcome back. I had to do some adjustments on this, and I want to go over what I did. Uh, I pointed the end of this cross piece. It wasn't pointed enough, so when it was tightening down, instead of the point uh, pushing into the hole, the end of the branch was pushing onto this piece here if that makes any sense and it was causing it to rotate so I just shaved this down into more of a point and the hole uh, I reamed out a little bit to the other side because it was off just a little bit and uh, I brought the hole over this way a little bit and you can see it's it's uh, it's sitting in the notch really well now this thing's actually really solid I mean you can hear that's almost like a guitar string here and that is the root cordage uh, and as this root cordage dries, it'll become very hard, very hard. And uh, it should work out really well. Here's the windlass. has the, a lot of tension on it. And uh, it's actually lined up really nice now. The blade is, blade is nice and straight. Let's take it over and uh, do, a, do a little cutting with it. I mean, you can hear that's that blade is stretched like a guitar string. It's really lined up uh, nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the camera. We'll uh, we'll go over and do a little cutting with it.
pretty good size. Pretty good size round. It's probably about a six inch round. And uh, cut right through it pretty good. Saw held up very nice. Uh, feels solid. I don't see anything shifting. And you can see the reason for the key rings here. There's a lot of tension on this. Love the smell of fat wood. That's a nice piece. Okay, well it works pretty good. I've um, been cutting some things with it. I uh, can't find any fault with it. Uh, works just as good as any store-bought saw that I've used. Um, it's nice and solid. The uh, pointing the, uh, the cross brace here and uh, uh, boring the two holes on either end worked pretty good. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't seen anybody else do that I could be mistaken I haven't ran across anybody yet uh, and also I haven't seen anybody use natural cordage on any of these neither so to the best of my knowledge uh, I'm the first one to do that so uh, but uh, I hope all of you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it for you had a lot of fun today and uh, it's always good to get out in the mountains uh, the uh, nice uh, peace and quiet out here I'm getting ready to shoot another video here in a little bit, so I'm going to do a, uh, a chaga long match, a technique to carry an ember with you uh, if you have to break camp and you're on foot, and uh, you can take a live ember with you uh, that'll last, oh, depending on the piece of chaga, it could be a few hours or all day, and that way when you get to where uh, you're going to camp for the night, you already have an ember. Put it in a tender bundle and blow it into flame. So I'm going to start on that in a little bit. So, uh, anyways, guys, I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.